And now let's listen in to Chester as he talks to graffiti artist Sharp. Hi, this is Chester Panel. Today I'm here with Sharp. He writes graffiti. So tell me, Sharp, how long have you been writing graffiti? Um, about five years. Yeah, and what inspired you to start doing something as precarious as writing graffiti? Because there's lots of danger involved with writing. Well, basically, since my friends were involved with it, you know, I guess it was peer pressure. We just wanted to be involved and wanted to be doing what everybody else was doing. Mm -hmm. So um, graffiti writers tend to, to write a lot on the trains. And at one time, it was so uh, a writer could see his name from one end of the city to the other end of the city in all five boroughs or whichever way the subway line would run. So is that still the same feeling with graffiti writers? Do they still actually go to the yards and paint the trains? Is that, do that, you continue well, to do that? Some graffiti writers are more dedicated than other graffiti writers. And some people take it more seriously than others. Some, peop some graffiti writers take it to the level of going all city because that's what they strive for and that's what they want to be. And other people just lay back and don't really do anything because they're just not that interested and they just, they're not that dedicated. Hmm. And other people just write on one line because they live next to that line. And other people are just more determined to take the city. That's what it's about. Oh, okay, I see. So um, with graffiti, um, like this whole new influx of graffiti into the art world as a fine art art gallery you know that's where we're seeing it now I mean did graffiti writers actually initiate that or was it something that kind of happened or you know how uh, did graffiti it, how did it writers did initiate that it started, started back in 19, work and it started back in 1980 some guy I can't really think of his name he got a bunch of good graffiti writers to all get together and all create and they all created paintings and like it was the first time that that all these people had like created graffiti on canvas and like it you know the show was successful mm -hmm. so from then on it's just picked up and it's the way it is today I see so as opposed to painting on canvas and opposed to painting on a train which do you prefer I mean would you rather paint on a canvas or would you well, actually not really just go into which the train? you really prefer it's just a matter of whether you can do both some people can paint trains but they can't do palatable paintings and they can't scale down their work right. and other people go straight into the art field and don't even bother painting the trains and, just and they do a few drawings and then all of a sudden they are anything and or better than I am. Okay, so we have, we have some of your work on tape here, so why don't we go to that and we'll be right back. It seems like every time I'm getting chased, like every, tep every step I take, I'm always like, oh, I can't take this anymore. This is the last time I'm gonna quit, blah, blah, blah. Like yesterday, I was running out the tunnel door and I ran right into a signal light and fell down on the tracks and I busted my ass. And then I ran and I tried to jump on the train and I couldn't. And every step I was taking, I was just like, damn, I gotta quit, I gotta quit. But when I was like on the train, like home free, I was just like, nah, you know you can't quit. <laughs> my parents looked the other way, but they don't really approve. Your parents feel real responsible for you, so they get, real involved so that's real upsetting but there's nothing you can do about it I guess I could stop but I don't want to stop because I just can't it's like graffiti is like a it's like a terminal cancer to me anyway I've definitely led a poor life and a rich life. I spent five days in my mother's house and the weekends in my father's house. As a child, I always hated it because I could never keep my clothes in one place, or my comic books or anything. But I've grown accustomed to it. It's a part of my life. I'm not gonna say I like or dislike it. To me, what people think of you is only a measure of your social acceptance not necessarily your artistic acceptance. So as long as I know that I may not be the greatest, but I'm better than Mo, Larry, and Schmo, then at least I prove something, you know what I'm saying? I prove that I'm better than them, and I'm up more than them. See, it don't seem worth it 
when you're sitting in jail and all that. And it don't seem worth it when you're like getting chased by these work bums with sticks and whatnot. But when you're just chilling out all fresh and whatnot and your peace just passes by and people are just like, oh shit, no, that's just fresh. No, 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 no. no, when you do that, yo, that's death, man. Then it's worth it, you know what I'm saying? Then it's, then it's worth it. So Sharp, tell me, um, why are you incognito today? I mean, why do you have your mask on? Because graffiti is not accepted by the whole of society, only basically by Soho and a few other people. But basically graffiti writers are, you know, we are outlaws and I can go to jail. And if my face is exposed, the wrong person might be looking at this TV program. So you're a vandal. So graffiti No, I'm, I'm not a vandal. You're I am an artist. You're an artist. But as to society, I'm a vandal. Just and I can't be put in jail for two weeks if I'm, you know, caught in the right act or whatever. But just, I mean, why, why should I be seen? Why should right, people I mean, know what right, I look like? Right. So have you ever been caught? I mean, have you I've ever been... I've been caught for um, very two things, but, you know, because I didn't have any evidence, they couldn't pin it on me for graffiti. They had to think of something else to charge me with. Oh, okay. So, um, tell me about, like, graffiti writers and how they interact with each other, like, going over somebody and the, uh, well, everybody's graffiti pitching writers respect, is a, you know, so. Graffiti writers is a very jealous society. They have a lot of ego wars and they have a lot of jealousy and just, you know, a lot of problems because people come from different areas and some people aren't as artistically inclined as others so they tend to get jealous and go over their work. Mm. So uh, about the interaction of graffiti, rap, and break dancing, I mean do you do either of the other two? Do you rap or do you break dance or are you solely a writer? Well I, I could break a little bit but you know I'm not the greatest right. because I really don't practice that much. So wh but, why do you think they interact the way they do? Why was it Well, like basically because, you know, you, you, get in, you start to hang out with these people and you get involved with them. And, you know, you want to get involved. So you, ch you, learn, you either learn how to do it or you just spectate. Right. Okay, so that sounds good. And how do your parents feel about your writing? I mean, do they get nervous when you go out? Do you even tell them that you're going out to do this? Well, or do you just, I mean, what, graffiti, how do they feel Graffiti to, a f to your family is really never accepted by them at any point. I mean, I've been writing for a long time now. My mother really takes it hard. But, you know, after a while, they, they get used to it. But they don't really like it. No, but they kind of just look the other way because yeah. they know that you're at the point where even if they say you're not going to do it, you're going to do it anyway. So why should they say anything? Okay, sounds good. So we'll be looking forward to some new murals on whichever line you choose to paint, if not all of them, or one. And thanks for being on the show. All right, thank you.